but it's good to see everyone here today. So uh, you know, we did have a reading from Lamentations today, and uh, gosh, I think it's just so great that Lamentations is a part of our Bible. That they're here in this one, in this one book in the Bible, we get the we get the proof, we get the permission, I think, to be sad. We get the permission to know that it's okay to be wounded. Because really, the more I, the longer I live, the more years of the life, the more I see we're all survivors. Because we all have storms in our lives. We're all wounded in different ways. We are all survivors. Now, sometimes when we're going through something, it doesn't feel that way. It seems like misfortune just always seems to come our way. That we're the only ones and everybody else out there is happy. No one else understands what we're going through. No one understands difficulties. But believe me, we are all survivors. Some of us have problems, have issues, have storms in our life that are obvious to us and to everyone around us. Right? The person we love has passed away. The, the, the marriage is in the job is gone. The business is gone. Something has happened and everyone knows it and everyone sees it and we, we carry our wounds openly. And then there's others among us for whom the wounds are hidden. And we're good at that. We're good at hiding these scars. Right? We don't want to let the world see. We don't want to let the world know the difficult times are, are on us. And actually, you know, a lot of times people don't want to hear that. You know, when you ever experience a, somebody says, how are you doing? And you answer them honestly, and they're like, whoa, no. And once you to be honest about how you're doing, now I'm back off from that. What well, the, we don't like to be reminded of, you know, we are all survivors. We all have problems, we all have issues. And here's a book that tells us that that's okay. And it's okay to suffer, and it's okay to be sad. And this process of healing that occurs in our lives, the process of moving through that moment when the storm hits, and either expectedly, or expected or unexpectedly, it is here. And from that time to the moment when we can accept it, and we're not happy about it. But this is a process that the Bible understands. And not only in lamentations, of course, it's a long word that means being sad, expressing our sadness, and I love screaming. How do we know we're happy? We scream, we yell. Yeah, we should. We should. We should give ourselves that permission, and that's something that we read in Jeremiah. I mean, in Lamentations, uh, we read about the people of Israel screaming and yelling and being sad and expressing that sadness. Sometimes we start to believe, and it's easy to come to believe, that all Christians, all the time, are supposed to be happy all the time. And even when tragedy comes, oh, well, God's with us, and we be happy about this tragedy. We don't be upbeat, and we feel like we don't have the permission to be sad. We don't have the permission to cry out, to be angry, to scream about the sorrows that we're facing. But here's Lamentations to show us how to do it. And doesn't really show us how to do it. Actually, we read the book and we say, yeah, that's how I do it. That what they were doing, what they were going through, that's what I'm going through. Or that's what I went through when I lost this person from my life. Or when I lost my job. Or when I moved to that town where, where I, I didn't fit in, where I never found a friend. That's exactly how I felt. Well, the people who wrote Lamentations, who felt it's actually Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. Let me tell you, I always fall into this trap. I think, where is Lamentations in the Bible? And I always want to play with Psalms and Proverbs. But no, it's not there. It's after Jeremiah. The reason that Lamentations is after Jeremiah is this tradition that Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. It was 586 B.C., 2,500 years ago, and the city of Jerusalem had been completely destroyed. So I mean, try to just picture this and imagine it. I just your home is gone. It's been destroyed. And your church, the temple, is gone, and all the other churches as well. They have been destroyed. And the markets are gone, and everything that you've ever relied upon is gone. And not only that, the people who have destroyed it have taken a whole big group of people away with them. And that's what happened too. Many of the Hebrew people were taken to Babylon. And the scripture Bible has this beautiful scripture that says that the people of Israel hung their harps on the willow trees and they wept by the river, rivers of Babylon. My gosh, it says so much to me right there, right? Especially those of us who love our music and our uh, musicians. I point, oh gosh, we're just 
too miserable even for even to play our music, paying the harps on the willow trees and weeping by the rivers of Babylon. They were in a terrible situation. And so Jeremiah writes this incredible book about loss, about suffering, about the moments when the storms of life descend upon us. And we see again, we read this book, we don't learn new things, but we see ourselves in it. We see the things that we do all the time when we're facing suffering, when we're facing loss, when we're trying to survive, because we are all, all of us, survivors. One thing we see is the shock. Right at the first, right? Something happens, and even if we were expecting it, we cannot help but be a bit shocked by it. How we see Jeremiah saying this, I cannot believe the temple is gone. I cannot believe the walls around the city have been destroyed. It's this gap between our hearts, our emotions, and our head. You know, what we're actually seeing in our hearts. And a big part of the first part of any getting through any storm and being a survivor is getting our heart and our head back in line with each other. And, and you know what? There's not a really great motivation to do that because the moment you do, you kind of start getting your head and your heart back in. The shock is wearing off. Well, that's when the suffering sets in. And it's true, boy, that what suffering can occur, the sadness that we can feel, and the anger as well. And when we start feeling sadness and anger, there's one thing we want to do, and it's very common, and again, we see it there in Lamentations, we want to start blaming. We want to figure out, why did this happen? Here we are in this holy city, this sacred place, and even the temple, the place where God's spirit is residing on earth, but it's all gone. How could this happen? How could it be? Well, it's easy to look at it and start blaming, blaming. And I'll tell you what, uh, it's, not a, it's not where we want to get stuck. It's not the place we want to be the rest of our lives, but Jeremiah does it. It's there in the book. I think it's natural for us to do, including blaming God, being angry with God. Uh, I had a professor in seminary where we were talking about the book of Lamentations, being angry with God. And how you see it there, and then you see it all throughout the Bible, people being angry at God and expressing that anger. The Psalms as well, and Job, all these different places. And I said to the professor, I said, I like that idea of being angry with God. That sounds simple. It's like lack of faith in God and the anger of God. And the professor said, you yeah, know, God can take it. That's the lesson from the Bible. That's the lesson from all these verses about people crying out and screaming to God. Why? Why? How could you let this happen? God can take our anger. We don't have to hold it back. God understands it. God understands anger and he understands sadness. We can express that to him. We have been given permission in the book of Lamentations to express sadness, express anger, and none of it is sinful. And none of it represents a lack of faith. We can certainly be angry with God, and we can be angry with each other, too. You know, when something bad happens and we do look out, we got people who is to blame for this. And it's true, in this world, there is often someone to blame, right? Something bad happens to us. Someone is taken from us because of someone else's negligence or we're injured or someone we love is injured or something bad happens or we're fired. Yes, we can find someone to blame. And it's not bad for us to do that. It's not bad for us to express it. But finally, we need to move past that. Right, we need to get past that blame and that, and that anger. And one thing we need to be really careful of is it's very easy to look at people we know and our friends and our family and actually those closest to us and find out that we're unfairly blaming them. We're facing, if you're right now, you're facing some difficulty in your life, think about that for a moment. Who are you blaming for? Who are you punishing? for what you're going through now, do they really deserve it? Now we start out, just like the folks in Lamentations, we're shocked, minds here, hearts in another place. Then we move on, we're suffering and sadness, and we're looking for someone to blame, and we're angry as well. But then finally there comes recovery. And that's really what Lamentations is all about. It is the process of recovery. 
It is a process of actually being a survivor and living like a survivor. What do you do? Well, you express it. You talk about it. You tell about your anger, your frustration. You let people know. You let God know. You don't keep it inside you because if you do, you never progress further, or it's very difficult to. You know, there, there's a progression that happens with us when we face difficult times, when we face times of, of great loss in our lives. We start out by saying, what if? That's a part of the process. What if? What if I had just taken better care of myself? You know? What if I had, had just told them that I love them more often? What if I had never taken this job? What if I had never moved to this city? All of these what ifs. And it is by talking about it, by expressing ourselves, that we move from what if to what now. From what if to what now, and I think that's a big part of what Lamentations is all about. It is expressing this anger, it is crying out in shock, and then eventually it is Jeremiah saying, well, what now? And realizing that someday it's all going to be better. Someday the temple will be rebuilt, and the walls around the city will be rebuilt, and we'll all be back here again. But it is with the realization it will never be exactly like it was. And that's the acceptance part of it. Now we accept that we have hope for the future, but we also have this realization it's never going to be just like it was. Important steps in the process of the shock, the suffering, and then moving through from what if to what now. All of those steps along the way that we see here in the Book of Lamentations. But I'll tell you the most important thing, and it's the thing that we need to remember as people of faith, is that who ultimately wins? Yes, the enemy comes in and they destroy the holy city. The doctor's report comes and it is not what we wanted. The marriage comes to an end. The child is in trouble. These things happen to us. And we need to remember through every moment of these storms of life what the ultimate outcome will be. That's something Jeremiah did as he was writing with impatience. He was standing there in the midst of this ruined city and he was saying, God's love never comes to an end. It is new each morning. It is fresh each morning. Jeremiah knew that when, when the people kept God in their hearts, everything would be okay. It wouldn't be the same as it was, but it would be all right because God is the ultimate victor in all things. It is the heart of the gospel. Well, let me share a story with you. It's actually one of my earliest memories. I was living in, I was just three years old actually, and I was living in West Texas. Uh, with my family, of course. Uh, my father was a minister at First Christian Church in Wichita Falls, Texas. And uh, one thing I remember about my father, uh, he still does this, he, he, he says it all the time, uh, when a storm would start blowing in, he would always say, we'd hear the thunder, we'd hear that first thunder out in the distance. My father would always say, I like thunder. I like thunder. I think he was saying that when we were little to reassure the children, but he was also telling us that to tell us something important about it. Because he grew up on a farm not far from here in, uh, in West Texas, in East Texas, in Hopkins County. And he always loved when those East Texas thunderstorms would come in. And so when we were there in Wichita Falls, he liked it too. And he would go out and he would sit in the yard and sit outside and watch as the storm blew in and the, the lightning and the thunder. Now, I remember I was again, about three years old. And, and it was getting dark out. And I saw that my father was sitting right out in the middle of the backyard. And uh, he was watching the storm, and the winds were starting to blow, and I could see some lightning up in the sky, and I could hear the thunder, but I, I got my courage up, and I ran out there to him, and I jumped up in his lab, and I remember sitting there with him and watching him. And watching that storm as it came in, and the lightning playing across the sky, and the different sounds of the thunder as it came from different parts of the sky, and then all of a sudden, a huge crack of thunder and a blinding flash of lightning, and I jumped, and my father jumped, and he kind of grabbed a hold of me, and after a second, I remember I looked up at him and I said, I like thunder. 
And then I settled back into his lap, his arms wrapped around me, and his air got cold all around me. So, I mean, that is what we hear in Lamentations, you know, the storms of life. And just as I was, or my father was to me in that moment, so God always is to me and to all of us. The storms of life are descending. The doctor's report is that the job is lost. The marriage comes to an end. The daughter comes up and says, Mom, I've got to talk to you. Storms of life descend. God is always there. God's love is surrounding us. His arms are wrapped around us. And so for all of us survivors, Storms of life come and go and play around our lives. I think the old Scottish prayer sums it up well. I know that I am wounded, but not slain. I'll lay me down and bleed a while, and then rise up and fight again. May God bless all of us survivors in our lying down and in our giving up again. Pray. Loving God to all the storms of life, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your assurance that you are with us, that your love always surrounds us, and that nothing in this world or the next can separate what we know of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ.